Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with some BuzzFeed. Yes, indeed, BuzzFeed. Yeah, we need to talk about how concerts are actually terrible. And in my opinion, before we get into this, this is just... Because, look, I'm passionate about music. I appreciate the talent uh, that goes in, especially into to live shows. Like... I just, I appreciate the, the socializing of it. And I'm not even a social person. I hate people. Uh, not really with a passion, uh, but I, I, I would much rather just chill, you know, like in a nice quiet, like on a couch, like I have a few friends over, but there's something about concerts, man. I love it. I love the atmosphere. I love experiencing the music with a bunch of other people. And there are certain things about concerts that you kind of have to come to expect because when you get that many people together, uh, a lot of them are drinking and <laughs> just all kinds of stuff going on. There's going to be some inconveniences that you have to deal with, but that doesn't take away from the concert experience. That's just part of the experience. But no, we live in this new uh, uh, generation snowflake or whatever you want to call it, where you know everything has to be comfortable and you know nothing can be dirty. No, you know it's it's just it's mind-boggling that people just can't live a little. So let's get into this. Number one, uh, they got a beautiful graphic there with uh, no doubt a representative of uh, Generation Snowflake having the worst time she's ever had at a concert. Oh, boo-hoo. Let's find out why. It's time we all admitted that going to concerts is actually kind of the worst. There are the obvious reasons like the insane convenience fees on ticket prices. Now, I happen to agree with this. Uh, ticket prices uh, are insane for big mainstream type shows. Like if you're going to go see, I don't know, Lil Wayne or even like uh, Metallica, you know, like some like big mainstream act, they're going to go through Ticketmaster or places like that that, that end up piling on the fees because they got to make their money too. But I would suggest, you know what, if you want to go to an affordable concert, there are hardworking bands out there that are touring the fuck out of this country. And they're really talented. They're really good at what they do. Uh, their music is good. Um, and you're only going to pay like 10 to 20 bucks to see them. So with maybe a $5 ticket fee. So why don't you give that a try for once? Uh, number five, the day the concert finally arrives, you have to wait outside in line for hours if you want a good spot. Oh, uh, heaven forbid that you actually have to stand around for a while and talk to people. Uh, and that's one thing I'm saying. Like, I'm not a people person. I don't like standing. <laughs> you know, you've seen me on this channel before, I'm sure. I'm a fat slob. I don't like to be on my feet. But for, for the experience of a concert, to go and appreciate some good music with other people who also appreciate it and to share that experience and maybe meet some new friends... I'm all about it. Let's do it. That's the only time that I'm a people person is when I can go to a concert. And that's, it's just because that's part of the experience. That's why you go to concerts. You don't go to concerts to sit and uh, listen to the album. You can fucking do that at home. 2011. I stood in line for, I think it was like two and a half hours in Reading, Pennsylvania <laughs> to see a CKY show that was ruined by their piece of shit lead singer. Uh, ex lead singer now <laughs> because of that show is ex you know two and a half hours in Reading Pennsylvania in December you know how fucking cold it was single digits but I did it because I love the music and that's just what you fucking do it, it pays off you get in there you have a good time uh, the venue's warm from all the bodies it's all good but then you're still stuck dealing with huge crowds of people who keep bumping into you again nature of the fucking beast if you're gonna go to a concert you're gonna have to deal with people bumping into you that's how it goes. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of people there. If you don't like it, stay home and listen to the fucking album. Cause that's what you want to do anyways. You're so afraid to be near other people, to come into contact with other people. Somebody rubs their shoulder against you and you, you fucking accuse them of sexual harassment. Just stay your ass at home. We don't need you there. If you manage to get a spot in the front, you risk getting smushed by the crowd behind you. Uh, and yeah, this is bullshit. One of the reasons I hate being on the front, uh, you know, like I used to do it a lot. That used to be the goal. Uh, in my younger years, you know, and go to, go to the front and, uh, feel the weight of the crowd pushing against you. But you know what? It sucked at the time, but it was also kind of awesome. You feel the energy of all those people. Like it's, it, 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 it's almost like a spiritual experience. Yeah. It hurts. You're going to be bruised for a couple days. Uh, but it won't kill you. Uh, I don't think <laughs> I'm sure somebody has been seriously injured by it at least once, but, 
Uh, for the most part, uh, they, they move around a lot once the music gets going. And if you don't want, you can easily stand uh, off to the side or in the back, uh, get a balcony, you know, whatever. Of course, there's not one here at this festival looking thing. But, you know, there are places you could stand where you could still get a good view. Uh, you don't have to be right up front. Just, just sit, listen to the fucking music. Experience with the people around you. Uh, feel the vibes. That is, if you don't accidentally uh, get caught in the mosh pit. Again, you know people down in that area are going to be jumping around and going crazy. Don't fucking stand there if you're going to be a fucking pussy about it. Or else you stand safely farther back, but I can't see the stage. Oh, boo-hoo. My view at the T-Pain concert. You don't need to see the stage at a T-Pain concert. I'm sorry, you don't. It's not Rob Zombie. It's not Marilyn Manson. It's fucking T-Pain. It's not Alice Cooper. <laughs> it's fucking T-Pain. You don't need to see the stage. You know what it is? It's a guy up there in a funny fucking shiny uh, suit with a hat on and a fucking DJ behind him spinning records. That's all you're missing. You're not missing anything. I think he might have a drummer and a guitarist from time to time. But you're not missing shit. Sit in the back, enjoy the music, converse, network. Either way, you're stuck standing on hard concrete for hours. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it's so bad to fucking have to stand around on some hard concrete. It sucks so bad for you, probably in shape, mostly probably close to in shape, at least in better shape than me, person, standing around on hard con concrete for 10 hours. Look, I'm a fat piece of shit, and uh, I've stood around for way longer than that for some concerts, and uh, I didn't complain, and I don't complain, because again, it's part of the experience. And you know what I do? If it's bothering me too much, I find a place to fucking sit down, even if it's on the floor. Sit on the floor, you simple bitch. Even if you bought a ticket with an assigned seat, you don't really get to sit because everyone around you just stands up as soon as the show starts. You don't have to stand up like they do. You don't have to, unless Kanye West is on stage. Or, okay, unless, you, unless you're crippled, uh, and he might give you a pass. But uh, you don't have to stand up, you know? Uh, sit your ass down. Look, one of my favorite things to do now, whenever I go to concerts, since I'm getting older, and I'm more out of shape than I used to be, <laughs> I like to just, if they have a VIP area, I'll, I'll buy a VIP seat, which is some depends on where it is. You know, I don't know how much it costs, but I actually like kind of sitting back. Like, you can see the stage, you can, you can hear everything, whether it's a rock concert or a rap or whatever. When you're up close, you don't get to hear everything. You hear, it's, it's like a jumbled mess, really. You know, you'll hear, depending on which side you're on, you hear that side's uh, speakers and whatnot. If you're really close to the stage, you'll probably just hear their monitors, you know, because the speakers might be behind your head or might be right in front of your face, and it's hard to decipher what's going on. But if you're in the back of the room, you can take it all in. And that's what I like to do. That's my favorite thing to do now whenever I do make it to concerts. I just I, I chill in the back. I get me a drink. Uh, I sit down if it's possible. If not, I'll lean up against the wall, and I'll just, I'll just chill, man. I'll listen to the music, and it feels good. I love it. Um, just sit. If you got an assigned seat, better. You know, I mean, yeah, you can stand up every once in a while and see what's going on, but you don't have to stand up. You don't. Just because everybody else is, you know, sit your ass down there and enjoy the music if that's what you want to do. And even with the assigned spot, you still might not be able to see the stage. Again, that's a that's a risk you take. Uh, and if that's something you don't, you're not cool with, then don't go. And uh, it's bullshit anyways because most places now. When they, when they sell tickets, they'll actually give you a diagram of what the uh, theater looks like, what, this, what the specific band or artist stage setup is like, and they'll tell you exactly where you're sitting. So uh, this shouldn't even really be relevant if you know how to pay attention. You never know what the public bathroom situation is going to be. Um, yes, you do. It's going to be a complete disaster. <laughs> it's going to be chaos. It's going to be horrible. That's what it's going to be. Every fucking bathroom at every venue, even the nicest venue I've ever been to, was a disaster. <laughs> It's like, for some reason, people go to fucking concerts and sporting events, and they completely forget restroom etiquette. Part of it's because they're drunk, but <laughs> I've been to shows before. They were at, like, uh, Christian Rock when I was in, in the church back in the day, and the bathrooms were nasty. So it's like, uh, there's just something about live music that just makes people forget uh, restroom etiquette. They piss all over the place. They get diarrhea in the toilets and shoot it all over the walls. It's nasty. But that's what this situation is going to be, uh, nine times out of ten. So you just have to live with it. It's it's a, That's the nature of the beast. And don't even get me started on the so-called fun 
of outdoor music festivals. No, thank you. I mean, you just sound like such an unfun person. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of outdoor music festivals. Number one, because the acoustics are usually horrible. And uh, that's my, my, I go to concerts to hear the music. And, you know, number one and number two, to enjoy the music with other people who enjoy it as well. And you, you don't really get good sound at outdoor festivals. And yes, it gets nasty. <laughs> You know, that's again, part, part of the, part of the experience. And if that's not fun to you, that's fine. Stay home. But that doesn't, that means the, that that's a problem with you. That's not a problem with the concert scene, uh, festivals, whether it's at a venue or festival outside, where inside, wherever that's a problem with you being too, uh, prim and proper and, uh, wanting to go to a rock and roll show, but not getting the rock and roll, uh, experience basically. Even if the weather cooperates, you still have to deal with, you know, other people. And this is the one. A naked guy has turned up at the campsite and took a shite in someone's tent. Um, look, that sucks, but you still have to deal with, you know, other people. Yes, you do. You go to a concert, there's going to be other people. That's just how it works. The concert, as far as I'm concerned, is all about the music and experiencing that music with other people who also are fans, uh, who, who are moved by, you know, it's like a, it's almost like a spiritual experience and I don't even believe in spirituality and stuff like that. But it is like whenever I used to go to church, you know, you used to get the same feelings from a very powerful church service, you know, that you get from a very good concert experience. And if you're not getting those feelings, if you're not getting those tinglys when the band comes on or when you meet other people that are just as into the band as you are, you get all tingly and you, you know, if you feel this, this force, uh, you know, if you're not feeling that, then you need to stop going to concerts cause, cause you're just putting yourself through torture. Uh, you're not cut out for it. You need to stay home in your bubble and, uh, rub some aloe on your skin and take some antibiotics and just chill the fuck out. Oh, other people. Oh my God. And again, I hate people, but like, come on, it's, it's going to happen. This is part of it. And the portable toilet issue, we're still on the toilets. The portable toilet issue is worse than the public restroom. Uh, yeah, because, uh, porta potties are shitty. <laughs> Literally <laughs> like porta potties suck so bad. Like nobody likes porta potties, but it's a necessity. Just don't eat anything. That's going to make you shit. Load yourself up on, uh, like take some emodium. You know, stuff that keeps you from shitting. Well, it keeps you from having diarrhea, but if you don't have diarrhea, it just kind of keeps you from shitting, you know, uh, while you're there. And then when you get home, take a bunch of X-Lax and get rid of it all. Or, you know, eat a bunch of bread or something, you know, like, uh, just don't get too much, uh, like good fiber, you know, get, get the bad fiber in your system. So it all stays in there. Eat a bunch of cheese. Cheese will help it, help it stay clogged. It feels like you have to wait forever for the show to even start. Um, well, yeah, that's because you're excited to, to see what you came for. Uh, plain and simple. Most concerts actually do start on time unless it's like Guns N' Roses or something. <laughs> you know? But it's, yeah, whatever. It's, again, part of the experience. Uh, the anticipation makes the point of them coming on stage and striking that first chord, uh, yelling out that first, uh, how you doing? <laughs> you know, like, like that's, that's what gets those goosebumps going, man. That's what you get, what gets you hype. You know, you got to have that anticipation there or else like if they just come out at fucking eight o'clock when, you know, it says show starts at eight, if they just strolled onto the stage at eight o'clock while everybody's still rolling in, everybody be like, Oh, okay, cool. It's started now. You know, it's not a fucking opera. It's a fucking rock and roll concert. Then you're forced to sit through seemingly endless opening acts. You don't care about just to get to the good stuff. Well, I think you're cheating yourself out of some new shit. And this is one thing that bothers me too about people uh, these days is uh, nobody wants to, to discover a new band on their own, even when it's being force-fed to them by being the opening act at a band you do care about. Um, some of the, my favorite bands I've discovered because they opened for a band that I went to go see in concert. Uh, that's why the opening bands are there, <laughs> you know? Uh, other than, you know, they're also there to, you know, kind of fill out the show and get the crowd pumped up for the, for the one they came to see, but it's also, so you can discover a new band. Most when bands bring another band on tour with them or whatever, um, it's because they want to introduce you to this band. Usually sometimes the label just forces them together and it come, turns into fucking CKY and all American rejects, uh, which was, you know, 
<laughs> or CKY and uh, uh, Avenged Sevenfold. Google those those tours, and you'll understand why why it's kind of funny. Um, but you know, <laughs> again, the nature of the beast. But I think you're cheating yourself out of uh, some good shit if you're not paying attention to the opening bands a lot of the time. And once the band you came to see finally performs, you realize they're not going to play their good songs until the end of the night. You're not even a fan, if that's what you're saying. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, you're a fan of the good songs, but why are you even at this concert? Why? (laughs) You obviously don't give any shit about the band, about their music. You just want to hear the fucking shit you've heard on the radio a million times. Why bother even going to the show? What are you doing here? Stay home. Nobody wants you here. You're ruining it for everybody else with your constant fucking complaining. My feet hurt. It's cold out here. It's cold in here. It's hot in here. These people stink. That guy keeps touching my shoulder. That guy was looking at my titties. Like, (laughs) you know, uh, those bathrooms are nasty. Shut the fuck up and go home. Oh, when are they going to play that song I like? You know, like, come on, dude. You're defeating the whole purpose of concerts. Plus, the bright, constantly flashing lights make it hard to even look directly at the fucking stage. Are you kidding me? The bright, constantly flashing lights. Um, That's called a light show. Uh, Bands do that because it's fun. And it, it, it accentuates... Uh, the music, is that what's the right word? Um, accessorizes. <laughs> I don't know, but, but it's, you know, it's a fucking light show. Oh my God. That's like, not every band does it, but most of the big ones do. And they're usually fun. <laughs> if you have a problem with a light show, you really should have stayed your ass at home. You complain way too much. And, and stop listening to music altogether. Just stop. Just stop it right now. Or, or you know what, if you want to listen, listen to shit that, it, it, that listen to folk music. They don't have lights at their shows. There's, there's not a lot of people. You, you'll love it. It's calming. It's relaxing. Don't listen to anything that has an upbeat tempo. Don't, don't ever go to another concert. Just, just stop it. And inexplicably, everyone around you is filming the show on their phones as if their cameras can catch anything but strobe lights. Um, actually I've, Taped quite a few shows on my phone and a portable flip camera. Uh, did I say taped? God, I'm old. <laughs> I videoed quite a few uh, live shows on my phone camera and my flip camera. And uh, uh, you're wrong about that. They actually come out quite nice. And uh, again, just one more thing for you to complain about. Because you don't understand what live music is all about. And once the band does start playing the good stuff... You can't even fully enjoy it because you can't stop thinking about how much your feet hurt from standing around for so long. (gasps) Boo-hoo. No, you know what it is. If you're into a band and they're a good performing band or whatever, uh, artist, whoever, if they're good at what they do and they get you hype, you forget about your feet hurting because you're so into the fucking music. You're going to remember they hurt after the show. Oh, You're going to be hurting, especially the next day. Oh, man. Trust me on that. The next day, you're fucked. Um, And you realize that you spent hours of your day preparing for just a few minutes of enjoyment that you didn't even fully enjoy anyway. Wow, dude. Wow. What is going on? And when you finally get home and listen to the album in the private comfort of your home, you realize that this is how you should have spent your night in the first place. Yes. That is how you... The person that complains way too much and doesn't understand the awesomeness of live music should have done. You should have stayed your ass at home and done like this penguin's doing, uh, retardedly beaten on the floor, listening to some headphones by yourself because uh, you obviously don't like being around other people. (laughs) You know, you obviously don't like hearing music performed the way it's meant to be performed. Look, albums are awesome. It's awesome if a band can get close to that sound live, but live music is supposed to be what the band sounds like unproduced. This is what the songs sound like because when they, when they when you have them on the album, they're produced, you know, they're they're fine tuned, 
and all that shit, you get an awesome uh, thing. But that's not how that's not realistic. A lot of bands can get close, but most bands put their own spin on it live because there are things in in uh, in production that are done that can't be replicated live. Or if they can, it's not worth the trouble. That's part of the appeal. You go to hear the music the way it was intended to be heard, the way the band wrote it before they recorded it. But that's just, I mean, again, that's kind of an opinion, but I do think that's kind of the like one of the many purposes of live music, of enjoying live music, is to hear it the way it's supposed to be heard. So that's number 26, and that's the end of that list. So in closing, the problem with this is, for somebody that follows music, uh, especially in America, especially rock and roll music, and heavy metal and things like this, punk, you, you got to know that the concert scene in America is dead. You know, unless you're um, a mainstream, top 20, arena, like Lil Wayne, people like that, artist you're not you're not doing big numbers in america as far as concerts go and it's not that these bands don't have fans it's that a lot of people share these same opinions people think well i'll just sit home and listen i'd just rather listen to the album than go see a band live well you know what that does that causes those bands that you like so much to stop doing what they're doing because they don't make money off of album sales they make their money off of live shows and merchandise So if you really like a band, if you really like an artist, and you want to continue enjoying their music, um, go see them live. Go buy a t-shirt. You know, this this is how we support music. This is how how it was done for for generations until the internet came along. And look, I'm all about the internet. (laughs) You know, I'm not some old curmudgeon that's going to say, the internet ruined everything. It ruined music. Blah, you know. But it did play a part in, in... this whole idea that concerts aren't worth going to that. You don't need to go to a show to have a good time. You don't need to go to a show to experience the music because it sounds better on the album anyways, which I don't even agree with that. The process, the experience of going to a live show is all about just hearing the music, experiencing the music, uh, the way it was meant to be heard and realizing that you're part of this human race and all these other people around you are feeling that same music at the exact same time. They're loving it. Uh, everybody's vibing off each other. It, it's it, it's an experience like none other. But you have to be into that experience. <laughs> you know, if you're just going because you want to hear the song you love that you've heard a million times on the radio or that you always turn to in the iPod, you skip the rest of the album, but you got like two songs that you really like, you know then you don't need to go to concerts. At least not that band or whatever. Not that band, not that artist. You're going to the wrong shows, if that's the case. But if there is a band or an artist that you're truly passionate about, that you love everything they do, you want them to continue making music, go to their shows and understand that you're not going to hear the album. You're going to hear the music. You're going to experience that music with a bunch of other people. You know, again, I'm, I'm the first person to say I don't like people. I like being alone, or at least I like chilling with just a few people in my house, in somebody else's house. I love listening to my records all by myself. I love with other people, but, you know, I like, I like solidarity. I like being alone. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be ashamed to admit that. But there are times when you have to get that social energy out. When, when you have to when you have to experience the human race and what better way to do it than in a way that you would connect with other people and instead of being instead of being a, a fucking uptight prude an uptight uh complainer <laughs> that's just like I, I know these types of people and that's why this kind of bothers me a lot of, uh, a little bit because I've gone to concerts with these types of people before that just complain endlessly. Oh, I'm tired. My feet hurt. I can't see the stage. Uh, it's cold. It's hot. These people stink. The bathrooms are nasty. Like, just, oh, shut up. <laughs> just just sit there, stand there, listen to the music. Look around you. Look at what's going on. Look at how these people are so into this shit. Because that's how we support the bands we love. 
And that's how we keep the music scene alive, is to go to these shows and buy the merchandise and uh, deal with the hardships, deal with the bad bathrooms and the concrete floors and the uh, being too short to see the stage and all these things because it's all about the music. It's all about the experience. It's just sad. Because I feel like a lot of people probably agreed with every every point on this list and probably don't support the bands they like because of these very things. And that's just sad. Anyways, BuzzFeed, you bunch of fucking pricks. Screw you. Go sit in the corner and listen to your records alone. We're going to go over here and rock out. Thanks for watching my video. Like, subscribe. Hit that bell down there to be notified of new uploads. I'm going to be uploading a lot more very soon. Check out the Chronic Confusion podcast on Facebook, right here on YouTube as well. Follow me on social media, Tony Dubs on Twitter, dubcast.tv. Got the holiday shopping gift guide going on right now. Uh, you can go on my official shopping web blog, dubslist.com. All the links will be in the description below. Uh, please, anything you do, if you can go on Dub's List or Dubcast.tv, click through the links, buy some stuff, you know, do some Christmas shopping. I'm really trying to get some more equipment, get some more cameras so we can take the uh, podcast uh, to video. I got some short films I want to create, uh, and I can't do it, um, you know, with the situation I'm in right now. So any little bit helps. Uh, you don't pay anything extra. We just get a commission. So go to dubslist.com or dubcast.tv, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Watch out for the potholes. Kitty, get your fucking claw out of my back. Get! Get! Hey, stop it! Stop it! You motherfucker, you better stop it! What is wrong with you? Why do you hate me sometimes? I'm always nice to you. I feed you. I give you treats. I even let you eat my ice cream sometimes. Ow! Fucker. Don't look at me like that.